now. Should I take off my video since I <laughs> start closing my eyes? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> project to um, the Andromeda Galaxy. And we're going to meet you there. All right, is everyone there? Yes. My body feels lifted. My body feels lifted. Okay, now everyone can open their eyes. All right. So our, our bodies are here, but our souls are there. Yes. So now we can begin. This poem is called Welcome. It's called Welcome. It's called Welcome. It's a duo poem. It's a duo poem. Um, okay. Welcome. I would like to welcome your soul. Your soul. Your soul. <laughs> your soul. <laughs> That's the poem. <laughs> so this poem is called Spend the Night and it's from the left upper quadrant of my heart. Mm -hmm. Not the bottom of my heart, but the left upper quadrant. Okay. Does this work In the dark we lay side by side. Your beak gracefully moves up my spine. <laughs> the ear on your leg kisses my cheek. You put your tentacles on me and I am weak. You stare at me. Mm -hmm. With all eight of your eyes, your left wing gently caresses my thighs. My hands on you, I move down your scales. With you beside me, hellish creature, love never fails. Thank you. All right. Yay! Yay! Yes. Well, no, I didn't before. Yes, we got this. And we'll make sure. here if you don't use them. Just know they're with you. Yes. Yes. If you like them. Okay, so I got to do a song called Beep, 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 Go get vaccinated. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, we forgot to introduce ourselves. My name is William Shakespeare. That's Shakespeare with an M. That's me. I'm William Papsmere. And this is William Papsmere, um, our my co-host. So uh we we want to oh, the floor is still open. This is the open mic portion, and then we're gonna break things up with some poems, but I believe, I believe my Colleague here, William Absmere, has a poem to read. I have a poem. So, would you like me to do bongos for you? <laughs> All right, let's give it up for our very own. Um, somewhere else. Yes, you got this. Thank you, everyone. We <laughs> got very warm. Oh, I was not busy there. Mm -hmm. Tell 
more foot traffic <laughs> stops at some. No more foot traffic stops. Fears. Fears is gone. Cough, cough, shut down. Beautiful. That was about the time I got my vaccine. What vaccine did you get? I, uh, um, on Monday, I went to go get the vaccine. My mother said, You should just get it. I was like, I don't know how did I feel about that, but I was good. Um, I did get the J&J vaccine on Monday. Woke up to some interesting news on Tuesday. They were called. So guys, might be my last performance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my class on stage. It's gonna be more memorable. See you on the other side. On the other universe. <laughs> wow! Thank you for that wonderful piece of art. <laughs> this poem is called "I Am an Empath." Mm. I am an empath. Everything you feel is mine. I am an empath. Sadness. I heard a baby crying on an airplane and I got teary eyed for I was once also a baby. I am an empath. Don't get emotional around me because I will make it about me. That is my wow. This is a letter of a poem that I gave this to my ex boyfriend. And we dated for, I don't know, like a month last year. And we had some good time, but also, you know, had some struggle like every couple's. Okay, I think I need to read this poem. Dear ex boyfriend. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> wow. That was great. <laughs> so much anger. <laughs> but also, so much peace, healing, healing. We're all here wow. to heal. <laughs> I need to move back because it's not our souls. Yeah, our souls are here together. Yes. <laughs> right, so this is a this is a duo poem. Two peas. Mm. One paw. Mm. Two peas, one paw. Mm. More pods than man. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Friendship. Mm -hmm. Shit. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. No more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two peas, we are pod. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Friendship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what is iceberg? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Every friendship has one iceberg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Jack's case, mm -hmm. it was an iceberg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. In our case, yeah. Mm -hmm. Capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, of course, we're all here to be here. We're all here to be here. Yeah. Um, so true. And the other thing about that is that we're all here. We are all here. And you know what I just realized? The Lynn and Top Mayor. Tell me, William. Shakespeare. Is that we're all here. Not only are we all here, but also we are all here. We're all here. And we're also two Williams. Two Williams. 
to Willie. Um, um, as in thinking, as in I have a consciousness. As in believing with a consciousness. Yes. What does it mean to have a consciousness? What does it mean to have? To have. What is it? What to is have. it? Where does the inner end and the outer start? That was another poem. <laughs> it actually, it was poem. Yeah, it was all this is all one long poem. Yeah, yeah we memorized. Yeah, we memorized all of them. This poem is called Frogman. I'm constipated from eating too much cheese. Mm -hmm. Your web toes got me weak. I'm on my knees. Don't cry. Please don't cry. The water tastes salty when it leaves your eye. Frogman, be happy. We've got nothing to lose. Later you'll pull out the steps and play me that funky blues. Hey, it's almost over. Come on, we nearly won. Hands me that shovel so I can bury this nun. This next poem is called Hot and Bothered. You got me so hot and bothered. You lit me on fire and screamed in my ear. It's bothering me. Please stop. Also get a fire. That poem is called Hot and Bothered. This poem is called Time Moves Quickly and I want to dedicate this poem to the face guy. Time passes so quickly. Your new anal fissure is now considered chronic. The seasons change. Yesterday is now last month. Where do you stand? And will your anal fissure ever heal? The answer? The anal fissure? It did heal. Oh. As does the heart. Um, it's always learning. Yeah. It's always about learning. My brain was like this, and now it's like this. <laughs> you think you wouldn't be allowed to brain aren't supposed to grow. So. It's crazy how that works. It's crazy how science works. We're learning so much about science. And art. They're one and the same. They're one and the same. Of course. That's actually interesting that you say that. <laughs> um, William Yes. I have a poem about that. Oh, wow. You do? May I play the bongo while you read your poem? Yeah. It really adds a lot. Okay. So I'm... Make sure you get the Okay. All right. We practiced this. So. Okay. All right. You're, you'll feed me after this, too. I don't have to sleep outside again. But... <laughs> okay. All right. Science. Chemicals go bang bang. <laughs> the world. What does it mean when the world spins? Does it mean that the world wins? The world wins. The world in which we don't win. The losers. The losers escape with their souls. And the winners. That was beautiful. I feel moved. Can you tell me what inspired you? Yeah. Um, I was in science class in fifth grade, mm -hmm. and I just realized that there was some whirlwind going on. Yeah. You know? What was that like? It was great for me because I wasn't near them. Was I was not near them at all. I was learning about tsunamis too. Really terrified of the crazy. It wasn't near them. Yeah. So, one time I was at the beach, there was a big wave. I thought it was a boat. It was fine. Well, I know that you have a poem about that a big wave in your life flashing by you. Do you want to recite that poem while I play the bongo for it? I'm going to have to think about it. That, that was what. Well. If it's too traumatic an experience, we can switch. You can play the bongo and I can retell the story of you almost dying. <laughs> I would appreciate that. Okay. This is how close we are. I know this traumatic story about Isabel, um, and I'm going to tell it. Hold on, Isabel, just like. Okay. 
your hands out and project your pain onto me. Okay, just like just, just like throw your pain at me. Throw your pain at me now. Throw it. Throw it. Throw it now. Ah! Oh, oh my god, it's all flashing before me. A huge wave. I see it. I could go great. Oh, wow, you put some other trauma in there too, Isabel. I didn't need that. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh my god, I'm like seeing a bus stop. Oh, why are they putting it out? Oh, this is funny. Oh, all right. You put a lot in there. Yeah. That's okay. I'm so this is called a wave. And it's about Isabel when she was seven and three quarters at the New Jersey Shore, as about a giant wave taking her under as because I'm an empath, she has put this pain in me, and now I will put this pain on to all of you. Um, this is called a wave. A wave. Big and wet. I am small and dropped. I'm holding your face. I am small and dry, but not only that, I am also dry and small. The wave takes me under, under, under. The water goes up my nostrils into my brain. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm holding your thing. It's okay. This is always about me. Uh, this is about me. This is her story, but it's about me. Art. This is art. <laughs> the, the water goes up my nostrils into my brain. I feel it in my frontal lobe. My frontal lobe is wet. As I'm under the water and my frontal lobe is wet, my life flashes before my eyes, all seven and three quarters of it. And I have an epiphany. Capitalism is not good. And not only is it not good, it is also bad. A lifeguard rescues me and ejects the water from my body and also ends neoliberalism with me. And I am Karl Marx this way. And that's the problem. Wow. Did I, did I actually, yeah. Yeah. Isabel, that must have been so traumatic for you. Really scary, guys. Um, it was really scary. In the life I got into, it was just my mother. <laughs> um, there, yeah, there was really no need to take it. Yeah, she was like, it's so like my frontal lobe was soaking wet. Soaking wet. They had to, they had to, they had to take out her brain, wring it out, and then put it back. Yeah. <laughs> and my mom, all, my mom was she there. did it all. It was just her mom was a lifeguard one summer in high school, and she knew how to do all this. She knew how to reattach it. Yeah. It was crazy. It was the really crazy. Yeah, they teach you how to do the body exam right after they teach you how to do the butterfly stroke. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. crazy. That hurts. Isabel, what's the craziest job you've ever had? Craziest? I've only had one job, um, and I'm still at a waitress at a diner. It is. It obviously it's pretty crazy. I know there's a poem about that somewhere in your heart, maybe. You just know my heart so well. I know. I'm an empath. I, no. I'm an empath. I don't know how much I said it. Feel all your pain. You're welcome. I would like to hold the bongo while you recite your poem. <clears throat> Waiting on people. Am I able to do more? Waiting on him, waiting for what? My burger is not good. <laughs> I did not cook it. Take it off my bill. I don't know if I can take it off. <laughs> One sip may be it, but it is not enough. To stop me, I am able to wait on a table. Maybe Miss Mabel will come with a fable for me and tell me I didn't like my salad, 
What was wrong with your salad? I didn't like it. Okay, but was there anything actually wrong with it? Like, did you order something that you didn't mean to? I just didn't like it, take it off my belt. I cannot do that. People, icky breaky people, walk around. Big boots on shoe feet. I know what I'm talking about. Big boots on my feet. Walk around to me, say, The salmon I got was bad. Oh, are you talking about the salmon that you bought from a diner for $15? Yes. I didn't like it. Do you wonder why you didn't like it? Maybe it's because you got it at a diner for $15. And you know, like, I'm like a child and I'm serving it to you. It's like a weird whole dynamic. And I don't understand why you wouldn't even order a salmon here. Don't get it. It's like I told you not to get it. I told you to get the chicken berries, but then you did it. You got the salmon instead. It makes no sense. Why would you even do this? It's horrible. I don't like it. Take it off. At any point, if I just want to be transparent about how little I care about everything that any ever happens ever, and at any point someone would like to interrupt me, please do that. If someone would like to come up on stage and shout, please do that. If someone would like to come up on stage, shove me, and take my wallet while I read this poetry, you are 100% welcome to do that. Because I care about nothing, ever. And I never have, I never will. This poem is called, I Care So Much About Everything. <laughs> I care so much about everything that's ever happened ever to me or to anyone ever. I care so much that I chronically have stomach ulcers. The acid from my stomach goes up my esophagus and I taste vomit in my mouth a little bit because I care so much about everything. If someone gives me a dirty look, I will cry. I will have a mental breakdown and cry. No one look at me. I care about everything. The poem is called Ear Infection. Everything is just kind of centered around medical publishers. Um, oh, I am slain. My ear it dwells in pain. My nemesis, toilet plundered up the building, broke my window and hamleted me when they got poured poison in my ear. Oh, this is the end. Fetch me a Q-tip so I may shove it into my brain and extract the poison, or else my nemesis will replace me as the sane ambassador to the crazy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, this next poem is called Mystery Poem, but I would also like to really emphasize, I care about nothing, please shove me or do something to interrupt me in the middle of this poem, because we're all just on a floating rock. Do you ever think about that? Sometimes I think about it, and then I stop thinking about it. Nice. But the thing is, when you don't think about it, you think about it, you're still on a floating rock, third from the sun. Yeah. This poem is called Mystery Poem. I came upon a mystery and it was mysterious. I decided I could solve it since I'm cocky and imperious. But strange, indeed, yes, it was strange, but I already took on the responsibility and I didn't want that to change. So I walked forward. I did this using my feet, occasionally on my hands, since I'm defiant and like to cheat. Then I came to a solution. It was right in front of me this whole time. All I had to do was distract everyone with a nonsensical rhyme. Uh, you see, I got you. While you were listening to this poem, I drained your life savings. <laughs> You're all in debt, if you weren't already. Um, the joke's on you. <laughs> yeah. um, we are going, we are, we are halfway through. We are halfway through the show, so I'm going to take a quick water break. 
and then we are going through it. You're on. All right. This is based off of this semester. I wake up, I study, I sleep. Two more weeks, and it makes weep. I advise that just try your best. No. <laughs> the bench's press is all I love in college. Without it, I vomit. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you're so brave. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. That was very brave. You know, this class, I told you, everything is the lemon pie has been deemed S tier by Caleb. <laughs> There he is, Jackson Brady. Oh my gosh, he has a haircut. I think um, with, with that with that being said, yes, the second act is we're officially kicking off. Um, so Isabel and I are going to actually tell a story together in tandem. And we're going to tell it only using automatopias. So from my hair. Yeah, so um, this is a story and it's called For Sale Baby Shoes, Very Warm. <laughs> Yeah, okay. about a baby who constantly wears the same shoes and won't change their shoes and everyone's like baby a stubborn baby well you've seen you wear those shoes so many times you have no sense of style you stupid stupid baby so the baby does not care no does not care and that baby's name was michael jordan <laughs> <laughs> and now he has shoe company yeah. What is it called? Yeah. Crazy. Crazy how that Crazy works. Much. I think the moral of that story is never give up when you're not so yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. He used to say it when he's a baby, but he's been in the No, he just goes, Shut up, stupid baby. Oh, oh my god. Do you want do you wanna do a poem about that thing we used to do? Yeah, that thing we used to do. We used to hit babies. How was this was back in the day. Back in the day, before before like 2020 happened, hitting babies was acceptable. Like, yeah. Was this was our time. This was our year. <laughs> this is our year. Yeah. Like, so what well, year was like Yeah. yeah. It was about them with hitting babies, which are okay. Yeah, yeah. And this was something Isabel uh Isabel and I would do for fun. Yeah. Back when we were young. So I've had the bongos. Would you like to take them and we're gonna tell you the story um with Poetry about a fun thing we used to do together when we were your age. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid babies. Stupid babies. Loud. Punchable. Crying. <laughs> Fears. I want to hit. I like to hit. <laughs> Isabel and I have convertible and long arms. We drive down the street with roof open and smack babies walking <laughs> down the sidewalk. They are arms. very long arms. They're little and stupid. Walk, 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 <laughs> smug baby. Wah, 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 smug baby. Punch, 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 ow, baby. Yeah, smug baby. I smug <laughs> baby, walk to a smug <laughs> 
so smart because it knows the alphabet. And it doesn't even pay taxes. <laughs> Rude. You know who also knows the alphabet? Everyone. I know. So. Not something to be proud of, stupid baby. Oh, you just learned how to walk. You're like, I walk. Well, yeah, I walk everywhere. Watch as we walk. <laughs> but there you go. And cheer? We cheer for super drunk baby? Drunk stumbling baby? We cheer? What was in that milk? <laughs> it wasn't milk. We know that. It was an ethanol based fluid. Yeah. Baby drunk. We don't know what they're drinking, but what are they eating, you say? Nothing. Sandwich. Sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Knuckleford. Oh, yeah. Back in the day, we used to do that all the time. Yeah, we worked at a deli. Yeah, we worked at a deli. We were just like, we were just fucking fun baby. Yeah. And then we got paid to do that. We got paid to do that. Was that weird? weird? Why did they pay us to do that? I don't know, but they kept coming in. I think the baby's like, yeah, masochist babies. It's <laughs> <laughs> nasty. But you know what happens with these kids nowadays? Popping babies out whenever. <laughs> what's going on with that? Yeah, what's going on you with know? that? Very strange times. Oh, we want to have, we want to. Improve their life. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. What's uh what's something about modern times that really aggravates? Modern times? Yeah. Um people learn to do things. Yeah. They put. They put. Yeah. It's like we don't need we don't need your girl. <laughs> we don't need your so, girl. What's a what's a new skill that people have been learning that's been really bothering? I would say my friend the other day learned how to ski and I became infuriated. Yeah, I feel like you have some anger about that. I do have a little bit of anger, and I may have written a poem about it. What? <laughs> so you just drank out poems, don't you? Did it's you like just to do what I do. As well, you tell this. I was not. Wait, can I get one last? Oh, yeah, how'd you get out of here? Yes, all right. This is a physical poem. Physical poem. I'm going to get love. I appreciate that. Okay. It's a physical poem, but um, I'm going to tell you guys what it is. It's a physical and also verbal poem that I performed before, of course, back in Radio City. Before the pandemic, I was performing in Radio City, obviously. Big mountain, little mountain, small mountain. Hi, I'm Isabel's friend. I learned how to ski. Does she know how to ski? No. <laughs> Little mountain. Small mountain. <laughs> Large mountain. No problem for me. I'm just no friend. I know how to ski, Isabel. <laughs> oh, I know how to ski. I'm, I'm just no friend. I keep skiing and she doesn't even care. <laughs> I thought, I thought maybe she would be proud of me. I, I learned something new. Maybe something I could teach her, but she <laughs> doesn't mean anything now. She she's gone. Where did she go? Her mountain town is out. And then she died. She died on the small mountain. She died on the smallest mountain. <gasps> and she had the smallest grave. Oh, great. And the smallest amount of people there. Yeah. But she actually woke up um, six years later because they had to bury her with the snow. So she's frozen. Wow. So it kept her brain fresh. <laughs> that could happen. Some guy is free. Like she has like um, a daughter. Huh? He said, like, really rare cancer. Yeah. So frozen water. Did work. I don't know if it's frozen. Well, 
<laughs> I learned something. Um, I learned that that doesn't. Well, I know. I, it's disgusting. <laughs> I learned something about this yeah. with this education that I received that cryogenics don't work because um, hydrogen atoms are really small and they still vibrate regardless of if they're frozen. So don't create these. Hello, I'm literally muted. This is bad poetry day. No, I love your hats. Oh, oh from Paris, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're doing a poetry night if you'd like to join or if you'd like playing. Go check out our security as well. We're definitely not making fun of your culture. <laughs> this is me appropriating French culture. I surrender. Um... <laughs> 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 Back to the science thing, I don't, I don't think. Oh, yeah. Well, I can perform it for you. Poetry. I think that was for me as a learner. People are like visual learners, yeah. digital learners. I'm more of a poetry. You're a poetic poet. learner? Poet. Okay, well. So. <laughs> you don't have to. Um, so, something interesting about uh, molecules is that they vibrate. So. Um, the cryogenics, the way, the way this works is that the particles stop moving because it freezes the vibration. However, hydrogen is very small. So I'm going to reenact this. So right now, um, let's say um, I'm in I'm a methane molecule. So this is me vibrating. And if you want to do some, some uh, bongo accompaniment yeah. like to match the, so this is me vibrating. And now I'm frozen. So I don't vibrate, I am still. But if I'm hydrogen, I I vibrate a lot. I bounce up and down constantly because I'm so small, so it's very easy for me to move. And now you all have bachelors of sciences in chemistry. That's how that works. That's everything. <laughs> yeah. So don't freeze yourself, it won't work. Does but, anyone tell that little girl? Because she's frozen. No, <laughs> she it's not, she's gonna die. She's in the <laughs> Oh my god, that's sad. Maybe we should, for her sake, since you and I are both very empathetic people, and very genuine people, very good, we're very good in the field. Maybe we should do a poem on her behalf <laughs> called Frozen Little Girl My Dad Didn't Do His Research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Are you going to be the perspective of the little girl? Maybe I'll be the girl and you be the dad. I would love to be the dad. Okay, this is a poem that we planned called Why'd You Freeze Me, Dumbass? <laughs> Words hurt, but why did you freeze me, dumbass? I'm going to die at some point. Uh, I do not want to be frozen and cold. Now I am cold. When I froze you, I didn't realize you would talk this much. <laughs> I thought when I froze you, <laughs> you wouldn't talk ever again. The thing about talking is that sometimes words don't need to be spoken. I could say everything to you with a look. And this look is why did you freeze me, you fucking dumbass? <laughs> Dad, you are dumb. Why? I give back a look. Then maybe I froze you with knowledge of the truth. And now we ask ourselves, why would he do that? And then we answer ourselves, say, the man, he probably did it by accident. He could not. Um, wow. Well, I appreciate your honesty, Father. I don't know what you're talking about. I have to bury you now. Okay. Thank you, Dad. Oh no, I'm being frozen and buried. <laughs> oh, I feel so cold and buried. So many popsicles. Oh my God. I might. Are you going to, to eat me by the side of the pool? <laughs> it's been hot enough today. 
Oh, as I die, my my whole life flashes before my eyes, and I I remember I remember everything. I remember being a psycho in my mother's uterus. Oh, it was so <laughs> it was so warm in there, and it's so cold in here. Oh, my father does not do research, and he just froze me alive. One day, when I am unfrozen, I will come back to a probably destroyed planet post uh, post a climate crisis, and no one I care about will be here. Why is he doing this? Stupid father. Nah. I'm frozen now. We <sighs> really see. And that was the phone. I got the plant alive. Thank you. I really felt her pain. I felt nothing that was. Wow, you might be a second. Because that was very easy. I just went in because you took all my feelings. Oh, yeah, that's probably what happened. I just take people's Who's feelings. Who's your mentor? Oh, it happened. Yeah, it's hard because our, our duo is like, I'm an empath, but she's um, not. And it's like, it's hard. It's hard to be around me. It's hard to um, interact me. Yeah. Yes. Can I do an intro that is inspired by this piece? Of yeah. course, the stage is yours. Oh, my God. Sorry. <laughs> so good. So, how are you? Good. Good. How are you? How are you? Good. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm okay. How are you? How are you? Good. How are you? How are you? Do we really care? Do we really care? Like when we ask that, or we just say, good. And when everyone say no, it's like, wait. This morning, I get up. I put on my suit, on my tie, get out of my lunch, get my newspaper. I say, why? I gotta go to work. So I got on subway and sit. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. I watch everyone in the car, but no one looked at me. It's fine. I got off the station and go to the zoo. I am actually on appointment. Employment. But I have my job, which is looking for a job on this paper. I see monkeys in a cage, so I ask, hey, who are you? Yeah. Good. I have food and shelter. Don't speak, I have food and shelter. How are you? Good. Okay. I'm good. So I take out my lunch box. I got my lemon cake, which is still from a college poem poetry party. <laughs> How are you? Good. <laughs> so I call my this job. Uh, need, a, need a college degree. Oh, I gotta have one. I have one. I have a college degree in my diploma. I spent a money with tons of money on that. But let's see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I do. I stay at the zoo for six hours. And I call come some of the company and I even got a job. They say, I don't have the working experience. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Got a subway and go home. When I got my, my home, and my wife asked me, How am I? Ask me, How am I? Ask me. I'm in cage. I am. To feel liberated, I put monkeys in an unspoken cage. Thank you. Wow. Oh, wow. Thank you. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's the entry. Roses are red. Violets are blue. I got the blue. I got the silence. I got the red. But you get it. Dark shows. Look at this. 
I have one last one. Yes, Sasha. It is a very quick, simple one. Go for it. Somebody farted. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a real stinker. That's a real stinker. There's or, a lot. Or maybe a real stinker. Am I right, guys? <laughs> I'm going to read three from my book, and then we are going to close out the show in a very emotional way. Um, so this poem is called Happy Valentine. Smile your beautiful smile and watch my heart flutter. Walk into the room and give me heart palpitation. I have a serious heart condition. Could you please call 911? The way you laugh makes my left arm go numb. Look in my direction, and I'm not sure if I still have a pulse. Your voice is like music, I think, as the EMTs put a defibrillator to my chest. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, but the life expectancy after a triple coronary artery bypass is only 10 years. Thank you. That was fun. <laughs> the poem is called A Kiss. It has a sponsor. I rented out this poem to a sponsor so I could afford to pay for my grill, my golden grill, which I wear. A kiss on the lips. His hands on my hips switch to state of arm. His body moves closer to mine. The two of them intertwine. State farm assistance is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long. Reaches out his hands and pulls me closer. Voice, like the music from a world renowned composer. State farm agency forces are made up of nearly 18,000 men and women who get paid to build meaningful relationships for a living. In the dark, our touch gives me light. Knowing you're there, I lose all fright. State Farm offers the largest, most robust catastrophe relief response in the industry, bar none. No one has the network and resources that they do. Thank you. You guess who rented that one out? No, you can't. It's so. I made sure to make it so. I'm, I'm running out, and we're all done. So. This last poem is called Conclusion, and that's because we're almost at the end of our show, and this poem is called Conclusion. It's the end. Over. Pick up your bag and take this Advil for your hangover. You used your jacket as a blanket. Don't forget to take that too. And when you get home, you should see a doctor because on your back, there's a red cube. Will you remember this? Will you remember this? I sure as hell hope so. I put a lot of effort into these poems, making sure they flow. Can you drive home or should I call you an Uber? This is a one-time thing. Don't call me again or you'll look like a goober. You saw it inside my mind. I really hope you enjoyed your stay, but now it is time for you to go the hell away. So thank you for coming. Maybe you can replay this on the holiday and consider it a vacation but don't relive this too many times or you'll want to give yourself a castration. Wow. Thank you so much for coming, Isabel. Is there anything you want to say to the audience um, before we close out the show? I just want to say thanks so much um, for coming to your souls. Yeah, they were really good. Hey, Ben. Yeah. They're looking at all your souls. Eight all your souls. <laughs> They're really good. The grow back. Hopefully. Hopefully. Sometimes no promises. Uh, make sure not to freeze your friends mm -hmm. or yourself. Don't do that. Don't do that. Unless they're kind of being rude. Yeah, they're being rude. Unless they're your daughter. Yeah, it's your daughter that freezes. <laughs> Just freeze her. Yeah. Um I'm sure you take it out in the closing. Yeah. Well, Isabel will be dance. Yeah, Isabel and I wrote a poem and a dance called Thank you for coming. Your souls tasted so good. Astral project away from the Andromeda galaxy and come back to this room with us. And this that's a very long title for this poem, and this is how it goes. Okay, so it starts like this. Thank 
Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming to thank you. Thank you to to thank you to coming. Coming. You thank came you for two coming. You came. Thanks. Coming. You came to our show. You came. You came. Did you come? Did you come? Did you come? Did you came inside our hearts and souls. and souls. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming in our hearts. haven't got the chance to check out the March or February ones, they're posted around school. Um, we're good. This is this is my last, this is it, both Isabel and my last events. So um, thank you for being here to witness this. When we are no longer part of the Pretentious Press, we just cease to exist. So yeah. Yeah. Who perish afterwards? Yeah. But Sasha is the president. Vice president? Yes, there's going to be a great e-board next year, um, some great writers. Um, if you haven't got in, um, the time to submit articles for this academic year is unfortunately us. If you're going to be here next year, uh, please get involved. We definitely want as many people as possible, especially coming back from a pandemic year. Um, and our e-board, our next e-board for next year, Needs all the help they can get. So tell all your friends about the club. Um, please come to our meetings next year. Make sure you follow us on social media and keep in touch with our keep up with our website. And um, that is everything. So thank you. <laughs>